right, this is the first step in which you basically just have to connect um, all the four heat sinks. Okay, so you can see all the little notches there. So all you have to do is um, make sure they all interlock. Okay, so like you see this one, make sure that it goes in. Alright, so you just check all the corners, make sure they interlock. Right, that's the first step. Okay, the second part of the assembly is my least favorite part of the assembly. Okay, make sure that the fan is on the side with one less hole. So it looks exactly the same, but note this additional hole here. That should be at the bottom. All right. So you will see that you place the fan on the side with the one less hole. Now, you look at this little white washers. Okay. It's freaking annoying. So what, what needs to be done is that you place it on top here. Okay. Alright. And and then you place the grill on top here. Alright. So the purpose of the washer is to make sure that the grill is elevated enough so that it doesn't actually touch the fan. Alright. And then you use this piece and go on top. Alright, well, I'm not going to do it properly here. Alright, so from there, you would then just drive all this in right through. Okay, and I'll show you once I finish assembling. Okay, so I've um, aligned everything. Um, so you can see it's the screw on the top. And the washer is, let's see if I can focus that, is right below the grill that see that white white patch there that's the washer and that's the grill okay? and this screw will go all the way into the groove there okay, so the next step is actually to install the the heating pads so as you can see it's very wafer thin wafer thin and it's actually very easy to tear and it, it comes in this um sort of packing and you actually have to kind of like peel it off, peel it off here, all right? So you just peel it from the corners and stick it on, all right? And you have to be very careful because this tears pretty easily, okay? Just be careful. And I find it's easier to lay it this way instead of this way because then you can sort of align it. Well, that, that's personally my preference, so... Um, well, you can give it a try. Okay, you can see this is actually one miner's worth of screws. So many. Alright. So I would actually recommend you get an electrical screwdriver. If you want to do it by hand, that's fine. It's going to take you a while. Uh, so I've already put on the hash board. Alright. So you can see where... How it's done. So the part with the white connectors should be closer to the handlebar with the fan. All right. So it's okay if there's a bit of overlap, it's meant to be. All right. You just want to make sure that there are no air bubbles. You just smooth out the, the heat pads and then you just stick it on. Then you will see that you actually can't actually see the screw hole. Uh, so you actually kind of have to sort of like put one in and puncture a hole through the heat pad and then sort of like wiggle your way. And once you get a few in, uh, then you should be ready to go with the rest. I forgot a very important point um, that to prevent any damage to the chip boards that while you are screwing it in uh, you will want to have one of these uh, polystyrene bags which you can get from from any of these bags and basically what that means is that when you rotate it and screw things on your chip will be supported by this polystyrene and won't be damaged okay so so this is uh, it it's all screwed in okay and uh, well the ones at the ends are well there's nothing there to screw it on so just leave it empty all right so the back bit is quite simple so basically you just take this mounting bracket and you just screw it right into the little holes there you want to make sure that it's tied uh, It'll be ideal to actually 
you know if you if you can get the electric screwdriver to get it really tight because once it's tight you'll notice that the heat sinks actually really lock in together if it's loose they kind of wobble around okay um another note that i actually had um sort of forgotten to say is that when you when you're installing the boards be careful that when you're installing the board this cable doesn't get caught because what happened was this uh, little connected here it actually came out here the cable was caught underneath and you know I had been screwing all of this in and <laughs> I had to unscrew everything so I could free this connector so just make sure that doesn't happen to you okay uh, so this is a fully assembled miner now the only thing left is actually the wiring all right you you have three short cables and one long one right so basically this is this is actually called a and this is called b a is the um well this will be your input and this will be your output so basically what you want to do is to first start with an start with an a right nah. and you want to throw it over and you go to a B okay. alright sorry the B should be the input All right. and this one this this spare one here you take the longer cable and you place it in here Okay. So make sure it's the longer cable. So this cable will be the one in which you connect to your Ethernet controller or when you daisy chain it to uh, other miners. All right. So, yep. I'll continue connecting them. Right. So I've connected all the cables and it's throughout A, B, A, B, A, B. So it's A to B, A to B. And what you end up with is uh, everything's connected, but it's not a closed loop. So there will be one free one. Okay. Which is not, you don't, please don't connect it back here. You don't want to close the loop. So just leave one free and you see there's one free one over there okay so basically what happens is that this one either goes into the ethernet controller all right uh, or it connects to another miner where you're daisy chaining it while this particular free one is when if you're daisy chaining it with other miners you'll be connecting it here final physical step before you actually uh you know connect the power supply and flash the firmware in is to make sure that each um let me turn on the light yep so each of these uh, boards have a little black switch okay which says one two three four five and they are currently all in the off position so what this uh, switches do is actually identify a board so no board should have the same number on, in your switch okay uh, i'll show you what this means okay so if you take a look here when you go to the iasic minus side you know if you need to pause this you should uh you see all the different combinations of the switch so you basically um you know this is the maximum uh, you can have up to 26 uh, different combinations that will work okay so if you can take a look you see one is signified by all off 17 is with one up and all the other rest all down so basically what you want to do is you want to make sure each hashing board does not have the same number uh, as any other board okay because uh, that's just basically giving it a, like a name like you know this will be board number one this will be board number 17 so it doesn't actually have to be in any particular order just as long as you don't repeat um don't repeat the numbers so make sure you keep track okay so like 
assuming if I'm connecting a several miners, right, I cannot have a one here and I have a, I cannot have another one in another miner. Any any miners and hashing bots on the same chain, that means when I connect this to all the other miners, cannot have the same uh, ID. So I think that's pretty clear. So all you have to do is just basically like, you know, let's say if I want to push, you know, I go back to the chart and I want to make this, then all I do is like, you know, just sort of push this little switch up and down, okay, using a, a sharp point. Um, just be careful, don't, don't, apply too much pressure and accidentally scratch the hashing chips all right so yeah okay so as you can see uh, i daisy chain five uh, miners all right so you can see how it's being connected it's from b to a b to a it goes across all, right. all together and uh, I find that for some reason um, only what the first the first slot actually works. Let me see if I can get a focus on that. Well, if you see it here, it says you want one, you want two, you want three. Uh, you want one seems to be the only one which can detect everything, and then it just daisy chains. Now one very annoying thing about the tube miner is that there are 8 PCIe connectors. Um, not many PSUs have that many PCIe connectors. Uh, this is a Seasonic 1250 watt and it does actually have uh, 8 connectors but the rest are Eckbell 1100 watts and um, there's only 6 of them. So what I have done is actually a bit overkill which is to take one uh, one pair from another PSU and power it up to a different hashing bot and so as you can see I actually have more PSUs than miners but in general you want a PSU that's 1000 watts and above ideally 1100 watts and above and um, you want to if possible you can get one with um, 8 PCIEs uh, or if not you can always do a Molex to PCIe connector which isn't as great um, but you know if you if you're in a pinch here yeah, this is this is the type of connector all right and um, yeah that's about it um, that is the annoying thing however the good thing is that because you only have one controller um, there's only one LAN cable, you just one Ethernet controller controlling about four Terra hash, which is pretty good, pretty amazing. Just that it's messy with all the PSUs. Yeah. So the interface is actually really, really basic. Um, it's like a block, like, it's nothing nice like Bitmain tags, uh, but it does show quite a lot of information. So actually like the default IP for this is actually 192.168.0.254 and uh, 8000 but uh, I've already changed it to dot one over here. So the first thing you want to do is that whenever you connect a, a miner to the chain, you want to make sure that you flash the latest uh, firmware from the Ethernet controller. Oops, my hand's shaking. Alright, so all I have to do is go to this IP, but if you're still on the default, it will be zero, okay? And um, you just, in a capital flash mega, just like that. And all I have to do is press enter, and you'll say flashing the bots, then you will reboot. Okay? So it takes quite fast, so maybe wait about a minute or so. Let's just see whether that's done. So you can see here, um, we have all this uh, information here and it's detecting all the bots. So, you know, we're good. Uh, you can see the settings here. Well, you can see my um, <laughs> slush pool uh, settings. But basically what happens here, this is where you um, enter in your IP 
Um, it's quite self-explanatory if you if you have uh, mined before. Uh, now take note that this update restart thing is quite finicky. Um, it usually takes a few tries <laughs> sometimes to get the settings to stick. And uh, this uh, Ethernet controller only can take traditional pools. That means uh, stratum pools, which means like slush, uh, gigahash, BTC GU are the main ones. Uh, it will not work on uh, those um, slightly different type of pools, such as Eligious or P2 pool. All right. So you only can work with uh, stratum, uh, stratum pools. All right. So. Okay, let's test status uh, actually shows the uh, ASIC status so you can see that from all this uh, there's one date chip which is quite normal uh, it's not all perfect but this is where you see whether all your uh, ASIC chips are running and usually one or two date chips is pretty normal right, so now from the statistics uh, you can take a look from here so if you take a look, the theoretical expected performance should be 4.1 giga hash. Right now, uh, with uh, running only around 2 minutes or so, it's already uh, achieved about 95.81%. Okay. Uh, now this hardware errors is a bit weird, because at any point one of these shows 100%, automatically this goes 100%, which isn't actually quite accurate. Um, and if you find that if you refresh it sometime, it goes away. And now a different, different board is showing 100%. So I have to say that the, the firmware probably needs some work, but you do get the reported speed. Uh, you can see now it's actually working at 104% and uh, 4.2 giga hash. And uh, with, each, um, with each miner costing slightly more than one Bitcoin, uh, unassembled mind you, uh, this is pretty good value for money, especially you have uh, spare power supply units running. Um, but yeah, the stats aren't that accurate. Um, it's a bit limited in the sense that, well, yes, you only can use stratum pools. But it is a uh, fantastic value for money if you want to assemble things. So I'll just have a quick shot of all the miners running again. And please note that you may actually have to uh, power cycle a few times to get things running, especially the Ethernet controller. The Ethernet controller is probably the weakest uh, link in this whole setup. Uh, it's kind of, kind of buggy. Uh, they actually recommend that if you do want the um, uh, miners to work on other types of pools, uh, you can set up a Raspberry Pi to control all of this, but I haven't given that a shot yet. So I guess that ends the ASIC Miner Cube setup. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know.